Welcome everyone. We're so excited to have you join us today for our Shared in the Kitchen, a simple Sephardic Passover with the Sephardic uh, Spice Girls. I'm Jessica Jablon. I'm the California Program Coordinator at Sharsharet. For those of you who don't know about Sharsharet, we help women and families facing breast and ovarian cancer, as well as those who are at elevated genetic risk through free confidential and personalized support and resources. We also provide health education throughout the country. One of our goals during COVID is to make sure that we are offering healthy living and cancer prevention information to you during this time and giving you what support you need. In addition to our virtual services that can be found on our website or by emailing us, you can also access prior webinars on a wide, wide range of cancer related topics, as well as access our calendar of upcoming virtual programs through our website. Before we begin, a few housekeeping items. Today's webinar is being recorded and will be posted on Sharsharet's website along with a transcript. Participants' names and faces will not be in the recording as long as you remain on mute. If you would like to remain private, you can turn off your video and rename yourself, or you can call into the webinar, and instructions are in the chat box now for both options. You may have noticed that all participants were muted upon entry. Please keep yourself on mute throughout the call. If you have questions for Rachel and Sharon, put them in the chat box, either publicly or click on share, share it in the chat box to submit a private question and we will ask them throughout the program. We will send out a follow-up email with tips and recommendations from today's webinar with the recording in the next week or so. We are very excited to continue our Share Shared in the Kitchen series, an initiative in partnership with Cedar sinai here in Los Angeles to empower those of us at risk for breast and ovarian cancer to make healthier diet choices. We've had wonderful guests for this healthier cooking series, and we invite you to check out our prior Share Shared in the Kitchen webinars on our website at the link in the chat. You should have received the recipes for today's program in advance, but my colleague is putting the link in the chat box now so that you can download it and print it or see it on your screen. We wanna thank our generous sponsors, Cedar sinai the Cooperative Agreement DP19-1906 from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, DHE, Sankyo, GSK, and Merck. It is because of their generous support that we have been able to continue to provide our series of webinars throughout the pandemic. Today, we wanted to let you know about one of our support programs. Our national peer support network connects women who share similar diagnoses and experiences. Whether you are at risk for breast or ovarian cancer, are newly diagnosed, or are a cancer survivor, our peer support program might be right for you. You can also share your own experience by becoming a Share It link, which is what we call our peer supporters, and enjoy the rewarding experience of supporting other women across the country. Our confidential links connect over the phone and through email and offer invaluable friendship and support. The peer support network is made possible with support from Genentech. And the link for more information is in the chat. If you are interested in finding out more about Sharsharet's free, confidential, and personalized services, please email us or visit our website at sharsharet.org. Now, before we meet the Sephardic Spice Girls, I want to introduce Rita, who will be sharing her story with us. Sorry, I had to unmute myself. Thank you for having me today to share my story. Technical problems, one second. I uh, found a lump nursing my newborn son in the hospital. I was 34 years old with no family history of breast cancer. So I didn't think anything of it and wasn't concerned. However, six months later at my follow-up appointment, I was asked to have four back-to-back -back emergency biopsies. Ben was diagnosed with stage two breast cancer several days later. I was shocked and felt like my world has come to a screeching halt. As a mom to a three-year-old and six-month-old, I only prayed that my babies didn't have to grow up without a mother. I went through a slew of very aggressive surgeries and treatments including double mastectomies and reconstruction surgeries, chemotherapy, radiation, and hormone suppressant medication. As challenging as the surgeries and treatments were, for me, the most challenging and significant pain was not being a mom to my children. 
They were so young and so dependent on me that not being able to hold or care for them physically was much more painful than any surgery or treatment I underwent. At that time, I didn't really know anyone who had battled breast cancer openly. I come from a Persian Jewish family, and in our community, most people don't talk about illness openly, especially breast cancer. In fact, I was encouraged by certain family members to keep my diagnosis secret, but I did the opposite. I spoke about my cancer openly. I shared my journey at a lecture at my daughter's preschool with other young Sephardic moms to educate and destigmatize. I wrote about my journey on blogs to help other young moms prioritize themselves and their health. And by doing so, I connected with other Persian women who were battling this disease privately, secretly, with no one to talk to. In tears, I had one woman tell me that she didn't want her in-laws to know about her diagnosis. Another woman confided in me about her diagnosis and said, nobody knows, not even her best friend. And I know there are countless other women like them. Cancer is such a personal battle and everyone handles it differently. I don't judge anyone who decides to battle this disease privately, but cancer is such a heavy burden to carry alone. I don't know where I would have been if I had kept it a secret and didn't have my support system. I didn't know about Shasherit at the time, but I was lucky to have connected with another young mom who had gone, undergone treatment the previous year. For me, seeing someone who had already been through this and was now on the other side, happy and smiling and enjoying life again, brought me so much hope as I went through treatment. She is still a dear friend of mine and on this call today as well. I am here today in hopes of doing the same thing for others. I feel blessed to be here sharing my story with you. My children are now 10 and seven and know their mom's story. They know my cancer journey has helped shape me into the woman I am today. I'm a more present mother and wife. I have reprioritized my life because I now know how fragile life can be. My cancer journey gave me the courage to leave a career I built for 10 years in corporate consulting and follow my passion for interior design. My cancer journey gave me the courage to go back to school with two young children and start my interior design studio. My cancer journey gave me the courage to speak about a very taboo topic in my community. This is why I'm incredibly proud to be a Sharsherit peer supporter and love everything that Sharsherit provides. I am impressed with how well Jenna and Amy, my Sharsherit contacts in Los Angeles, understand my Sephardic community and the challenges the cancer patients and survivors face in sharing their stories. They're always willing to speak to those who may want to remain anonymous and still provide them with support and resources. I love that they are allowing people like me to share our stories and connect with other women who need to hear this right now at this moment in time. So thank you so much. Oh, thank you, Rita, for sharing your powerful story with us today. Your willingness to share your experience has helped so many women and continues to do so. And we're so grateful to have you as part of our peer support network. And thank you for being here today. Um, if you're interested in becoming a link or potentially finding peer support, please email us at clinicalstaff at shasherit.org or put a note in your evaluation so that we can follow up with you. The Passover is a holiday about tradition. Every year at our seders, we recount the same story of the Exodus. We eat specific foods in a specific order and make recipes that may have been passed down from generation to generation. But I know in my family, I always enjoy finding new recipes to enhance our Passover meal. And that's just what we're doing today. We have a jam packed program with four delicious Passover recipes from our special guests, the Sephardic Spice Girls, Sharon Gompertz and Rachel Chef. Sharon and Rachel have been friends since high school. They are passionate about healthy food and happy living. Their goal is to preserve Sephardic and Mizrahi recipes and the Moroccan and Iraqi recipes of their mothers and grandmothers. In their weekly food column in the Los Angeles Jewish Journal, they share recipes, personal anecdotes, and Jewish history. The Sephardic Spice Girls Project has grown from a collaboration on events for the Sephardic Educational Center in Jerusalem they run community cooking classes and challah bakes, 
And you can follow them on Instagram at Sephardic Spice Girls and on Facebook at Sephardic Spice SEC Food and on their website at SephardicSpiceGirls.com. Just a quick note, please stay tuned to the end of the webinar and make sure to fill out our evaluation as we are excited to give away a beautiful Sephardic Spice Girls candle that Rachel and Sharon generously donated to this program. So we have been planning this program for months and it's been so wonderful to get to know you both. We are so appreciative of the support you've given Sharsherit over these past several months, even helping to coordinate a Sharsherit community program to, education, to educate parents at a school here in Los Angeles. Thank you so much, uh, Rachel and Sharon. Welcome to Sharsherit in the Kitchen and uh, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you so much, Rachel. Uh, Rita, sorry, your story was um, so touching and we're so glad that you are well and thriving and doing what you love to do. And that's so important to be passionate about what you do. Um, yes, thank you so much for sharing that with us. It's so important to be open <clears throat> and share our lives with everyone. And um, thank you, very nice. Yeah. So, um, you know, we're, we're, we're excited. We're right excited now. to be here. <laughs> we have a lot to go through, but we wanna let you know that like, you know, we're going to give you examples of what we do, but feel free to adjust these recipes. It's really, it comes from you, what your palate is and how comfortable you are in the kitchen. Um, you know, we all, like you said, we, you know, we all have our standard Passover recipes, but, you know, Sharon and I love to lighten things up, change things up. So um, these might be uh, recipes that you kind of like acknowledge, like the stuffed peppers and zucchinis. Normally your mother, your grandmother made them with meat. stuffed cabbage and with meat and yeah. So yeah. there are no rules. That's, that's our, our message to you. Just enjoy and let's have some healthy cooking time. Okay, let's start with our... So we make an herbalicious sauce and um, this sauce today we're gonna use on fish. And um, normally I, I poach or I oven bake a salmon and I put this sauce on it. Um, I've started making it a little fancier for Friday night dinners with potatoes and leeks and a white fish. Um, this sauce, if you make a big jar, jar of it, the idea is you will use it all week long during Passover or keep it in your fridge. You can serve it with meat, you can serve it with um, chicken thighs, chicken breasts, alongside your roasts and any fish, and then you can even thin it out and put it into a quinoa salad. It's an amazing sauce. So I'm gonna go ahead and start, and you're going to use all the herbs that you love. Here I have parsley, Italian flat leaf parsley, cilantro, cilantro. and as you can see, I'm using like a big bunch of each. I have dill, a bunch of fresh mint, fresh mint. and what I do is, you know, I come home from the store and I soak everything. I try to get as many things as I can, as many herbs as I can that are organic, but if not, you're gonna take extra care to soak them extra time. And then um, I have some beautiful basil. Beautiful basil. Mm -hmm. And so you're just gonna pop it into your food processor and chop it up. So when they're crushed down like that, you know, you don't even... Yeah, I'm gonna add three big cloves of garlic. Again, if you're not into garlic, don't put it in. If you love garlic, add more. <laughs> I'm gonna put in my olive oil and you're making a pesto basically, but it's not gonna have any nuts. And I have lemon juice, fresh squeezed lemon juice, black pepper, some Himalayan pink salt and kosher salt you mixed. Um, I just put Himalayan pink salt okay. I get really finely ground up one. And it's really important because it has a lot of minerals. So the more you can use the pink salt, the better it is for you. So I'm going to also And there's our green sauce. And really it is super delicious. This is something that you're gonna make over and over again. And it keeps for a good week in your fridge. Um, pour it into a mason jar or a Tupperware and there you are. So I'm going to take you over to the stove and we're going to start our fish. Um, maybe I'll take this with me. <laughs> so we are 
Kristen's kitchen today. So kind of her to give it to us today. Oh, why? <laughs> Glad I didn't blow up my hair. Okay. <laughs> do you use the olive oil? Yes, I do. Oh, no, I have it right here. Oh, you have it. Sorry, she meant Actually, it um, yeah, so here's the oil. It's just about a fourth of a cup, and I know you all have the recipes or will have the recipes. Um, you're going to start with very finely cut um, leeks, and I love this little kitchen tool. You can get it on Amazon. It's a little mandolin, and it's not like vicious and scary like most mandolins. And what you'll do is you'll just take your leek and go like this, and you get these beautiful little tiny thin strips. Once you've grated it all, then soak it in water because you know that um, leeks hold on to so much dirt. So um, I'm putting in my leeks. And leeks are amazing with fish. They have a beautiful, mild, sweet flavor, not as sharp as onions. There you go. So we're going to let that cook for a little bit. Meanwhile, I'm taking my potatoes. Again, I'm using my mandolin. And um, you can just thinly slice your potatoes that you washed. I like these yellow gold potatoes. You can use the red, you can use whatever you have on hand. So, the yellow is soft and creamy, right? Yeah. So normally, if we weren't on camera this morning, I would wait a good like little 10 minutes, cover this, let it cook down. Um, I'm gonna put a little salt. And then you're just going to start putting your potatoes down. And again, you want to give everything some time to cook, but we're a little pressed for time because we want to share with you so many recipes this morning that will be so useful to you throughout the week. You don't have to keep cooking over and over again. And you have things already lined up for the week for lunches or for your dinners. And then you're going to put salt on top because potatoes yes. love salt. So here's my salt. <clears throat> and oh, it looks like a lot, but <clears throat> potatoes need salt. <clears throat> I'm going to put a little pepper. Um, then I'd like to show you what, what I like to use is fresh turmeric. This is a root. They sell it next to the ginger at most markets now. The days it used to not be so popular. Um, I, this one's particularly red and crazy beautiful. So I'm going to put about half of that. And turmeric is just mm -hmm. so healthy. And I like to use this little grinder as well. Um, the little grater that I have. So these are like my everyday go-to kitchen tools that I love. <laughs> All right. And both from Amazon. And I can maybe find the link and put it on our Instagram for you ladies. That would be <laughs> Oh, um, here I have saffron water. Very easy. You take some saffron that you can buy nowadays at Trader Joe's even. It's not as expensive as it used to be. And you just steep it in warm water in a bottle and you keep it in your fridge or on your counter even. And I love to use it in this recipe. I use it in the, all my like Friday night chicken. Um, and then over here, what I've done is um, I laid out my fish, I sprinkled the salt on it, and what, it, what happens is that the, the salt helps all the moisture come out of the fish. So you're just going to pat it down to get some of that salt off. And then we're going to start putting down our fish. I would, again, 10 minutes from now when the potatoes and the leeks are a little bit more caramelized, that's when I start putting down the fish. Here we go. And... Um, you know, I love to make this with sea bass, any kind of white fish, halibut, sea bass, white fish, branzino. This happens to be, this happens to be um, sole because I couldn't find any sea bass or branzino that looked nice um, at the market. So it's, you know, you go with, with what looks fresh and delicious. Um, and you can cook this with skin as well. Your fish, can, your fish pieces can have skin on them. Okay, so grab a spoon. Wait, Rachel, how long can the saffron water stay on the counter? Oh, weeks. 
literally weeks, <laughs> but you're going to use it quicker than that. And if you're worried and you don't want to leave it out, put it in your fridge. It's totally fun. So um, I've got preserved lemon. These, we have a little video on our Instagram and um, on our Facebook showing you how to make them. They're super easy. It's basically um, salt and lemon juice and lemons. And I use it, it gives this an unbelievable flavor. And what, what if the, they don't have preserved and lemon? If you don't have, because it does take a month to two months to preserve. They can just squeeze fresh um, lemon you're juice? You're going to squeeze fresh lemon juice. And um, yeah, you'll squeeze some lemon juice on there. And then we're going, I'm going to add some white wine. The recipe calls for a half a cup of white wine, I believe. You don't have to use a white wine. You can put a little bit more of this saffron water to make it a beautiful color. And you're going to turn down the fire and simmer it. Now, we'll let it cook and Sharon is going to start doing the stuffed vegetables and then I'll show you what we do with the green sauce. So um, this is a very traditional Sephardic recipe. My grandmother used to do the grape leaves. Rachel does the grape leaves, stuffed cabbage but, and onions, but um, I'm lazy. Everything quick and easy. So I'm doing it with tomatoes and I only use this wash because I find zucchini is bitter. I love this wash. Um, and then I use mini peppers, but if you're just doing it for a few people, you could use a red pepper and you can just cut the top like that, seed it, and that makes it beautiful. You take the top, you take the seeds off and then you can stuff that. Um, let's see what else. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how I cut and core my zucchini. I cut it in about three, you want them not too big. And the thing about this dish is, that it's nice for when you have a bunch of guests because everyone can try every single vegetable. Um, yeah, it's a great side dish. Um, you know, even for a lunch, you can make it a main meal. Yeah, with a good salad. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, so you want to core it out, leave a little bit at the bottom. Um, and I don't like to waste. So I take this and just put it in the dish because it adds a bit of water um the the inside of the zucchini and then you just put it here you pop it here okay let me tell you about the stuffing um I've, yes uh, somebody had uh, you kind of broke out there when you were talking about the zucchini and what kind of what you prefer what oh you prefer. So this this is uh sometimes referred to as mexican squash or white squash i don't like zucchini because sometimes i mean i love zucchini but sometimes it's bitter and then that's disappointing because if your whole dish is kind of ruined. I don't like bitter vegetables. So that's why I use this and you hollow it out. And then for the, um, for the stuffing, you're gonna use cooked quinoa. Uh, I love to have quinoa in my fridge, um, especially, you know, for Ashkenazim that can't have rice like we can on Pesach. So quinoa is wonderful to have. It lasts a good five, six days in the kitchen, in the fridge. But, um, so you're gonna take cooked quinoa you're gonna take fresh mint, you're gonna take parsley, you're gonna chop it really nicely. I'm not like Rachel, I don't use my food processor. My mom thinks I'm crazy because um, she like, my mom also uses her food processor, but I love the meditative feeling of chopping my vegetables, of touching my food. It's very tactile, it's relaxing. I don't mind, I take the extra time. I'm gonna throw out my stalks. I would say my best kitchen tip is have a trash bowl on hand all the time. So you're gonna chop your greens really finely. You're gonna mix it in. We're gonna put some olive oil. We're gonna put salt and pepper. Pretend that I already put the salt and pepper. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that's that. And then I'm gonna put my pecans. So as I said, this um, is very traditional Middle Eastern, but they would do it with ground lamb or ground beef. And we've met, met, um, changed it up because there are so many vegans and vegetarians and you know and it's you don't miss it in this recipe uh i made it last week and my family just loved it really really enjoyed it and the the pecans and the quinoa give you you know like lots of protein and they taste delicious so then you're gonna like stuff 
each vegetable. Don't stress if the stuffing falls into your dish because it'll just be delicious in the sauce. And what's really cute is when you keep the, the lids of the vegetables like that and you can cover them. Um, I'll show you that. And then I'm gonna show you how we make the sauce. It's a really, it's a little bit of prep, but it's really worthwhile. And these, this, um, these vegetables taste even better the next time when you reheat them. So if there's leftovers, be really happy about that. Do you prefer if I bring you the pot to show them how to make the sauce? Or sure, let's do that. I don't need the heat for that. So, sorry, out of the way. Thank you. Um, so you're gonna put your olive oil. You're gonna, and pretend I'm on a fire here, and then you're gonna like saute your garlic a little bit, not too much, you don't want it to burn and get bitter. You're gonna do that. You're gonna add your tomato sauce. Just crushed tomatoes. Crushed tomatoes. A little thicker. It's delicious. This is a really nice one. Um, the recipe says 14 ounces. Use the eight, use the 28 ounces. Um, you know, I, like I said, I don't like to waste. So I kept the inside of the tomatoes and I'm gonna add it to the sauce. I'm gonna add lemon juice. You need the juice of one lemon. Beautiful, fresh. I'm going to add paprika. I'm gonna add turmeric. And um, you, you know, my grandmother used sugar, but we're a little tiny bit healthier and we're gonna add honey. Honey makes everything delicious. So, and it balances the, uh, the lemon, the, the acidity of the lemon and brings out the yummy flavor of the tomatoes. You're gonna just boil that on the fire and then we're gonna pour it over the vegetables. So maybe we'll start our next recipe and I'll cook this and then I'll show you how it looks once you poured it over. Okay. So here, I'll turn on the fire for you to see. Watch out. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so we're just going to stir it really well and like bring it to a boil and then, sorry, you want the lid? We're going to bring it to a boil and then once it's boiled, we're going to lower it and just let it simmer so all the flavors come out and um, everything's cooked and delicious. Are you, what are you doing next, Rachel? So I'm going to make uh, something called matuja, uh, which is a tomato sauce with peppers that you eat as a dip, a salad on your, you know, on Friday nights. Um, you put, you know, you serve it with all your salads. It's part of the Moroccan um, salad dips that everybody is so into these days. Um, no problem, burner. Okay. <laughs> so um, growing up, this was basically our ketchup. We didn't eat ketchup, we ate matbucha. <laughs> so, um, you're going to start with some olive oil and you notice we use a lot of olive oil and avocado oil. Um, those are my two basics all the time because they're just the healthiest oils you can find out there right now. Um, so again, you're going to use in this recipe, my mother used to peel and dice and drain all the tomatoes and it took hours and hours. So we're using chopped tomatoes or whole tomatoes that you've cut up drain the liquid and I keep the liquid on the side because sometimes this gets these are both kosher for Passover just so you know so you're putting in um your chopped tomatoes and you are going to add a lot of garlic now this is something that you're going to cook for a very long time it stays on the fire four to five hours and it's also called like the salad quit, which is like cooked salad. <laughs> so what happens is it caramelizes your onions and your peppers and everything gets so intense that it has like just a beautiful tomatoey, delicious taste. And it's incredible on matzah as well. The only spice you're going to use is paprika and salt. Here I've um, charred some peppers in my, in my oven. I put 500 degrees. This is what they're going to look like. You put them in a bag, you peel them, so they steam and you peel them. So after you've simmered this for about 
three hours. It's going to be really rich and you have to be nearby. You can't just like leave it and go away. You have to come back every half hour, give it a stir on the bottom, make sure nothing's sticking, you know, and then we're going to add, I'm going to use my hands. So <laughs> has too much liquid. Um, the, the chart of green peppers. And it's okay if you have little pieces of skin that are left over. It's okay if it, you have the little chars left over on there. Gives it like a really nice flavor and a nice look. So you're adding your peppers. And then you let it cook some more. Another hour, let's say. Then you come back. You put in your paprika and your salt. And you let it cook another half hour and then you're done. And when you're done, it's going to look like this. So this is our salad plate. You see the dark color? It's completely transformed the, the, the tomatoes and the peppers. And it's like a jam, basically. It tastes like a jam. It's so, so delicious. So why do I love this so much? Because not only is it delicious with your matzah and your challah and whatever you're going to serve, your other salads, but let's say, you know, make a lot, follow my recipe, make a lot of it, put it in the fridge. Tomorrow, take some, warm it up, crack some eggs, you have a shakshuka. The next day, you don't know, oh my God, what am I gonna make for dinner? Take it, warm it up, drop some fish in it. And you've got a beautiful fish dish. So it's really versatile. versatile. And the cooked tomatoes and the cooked peppers, you can't get anything healthier than that. The spices, you know, we, we need to use more spices and paprika and turmeric. There's spices that we don't even think. You just throw it on everything. Right. You know? Now, some people like spice. You can add a jalapeno in there with pepper flakes, harissa. You always use the uh, little cans of fire roasted chili peppers. Right. I love those. I get them at Trader Joe's. You can dump a little bit in there. Yeah. Um, if you don't, if you feel like you don't really know how to roast peppers, you don't want to mess around with it. No problem. Chop up your peppers. At the end, the last hour, put them in there and let them cook. They'll cook an hour or two and they get soft and delicious. Yeah. So, all right, so we're doing great. Let's go check the fish. And there were a couple of questions that came in about the, the sauce for the fish. Um, the no, fish. Oh, this fish. The herbal, yeah, the herbalicious uh, sauce. Um, yes. Somebody asked um, if you omit white wine, what to use instead? Oh, absolutely, just water. Just put a little water so it doesn't stick and it creates a sauce and add a little bit more of your saffron water. And then somebody else had asked uh, if, if uh, somebody's a vegetarian, what else would you recommend using the sauce on? Yeah, so you can definitely put it into a quinoa salad. You can put it in a kale salad. Would it would be delicious. be delicious over grilled vegetables. Yeah, uh, definitely. Yeah. You can grill eggplants uh, and peppers, uh, asparagus, and you just drizzle it on there. Awesome. Uh, pasta, if it's not Passover, <laughs> you can definitely do that. So this is how I serve it. I drizzle it on top of the fish. Um, and the colors are just so vibrant, the yellows and the greens. And there you are. And Again, this fish, you can also put it in an oven safe dish, put everything out in there, drizzle the water or the wine, everything, and put it in, and put the green sauce and bake it. You can bake it in the oven and it's delicious and it looks amazing. So there's that. Your tomato sauce. Let's see. Let's see. I think this tomato sauce is looking good. Let's give it a little stir and we're going we're gonna to throw this over the veggies and then you're gonna just spoon it over so the vegetables are covered and just bake it in the oven and it's just so delicious. And you know, if you have any other vegetables that you, that you love, you could, you know, stuff those as well. My grandmother used to stuff beets and potatoes and whatever she had. She onions, just, onions, onions, onions are delicious. Onion yeah, yeah. yeah. You, uh, you have to, with, when you do the onions, you kind of have to boil them a little bit, cook, you know, so that they're soft, um, so that you can hollow them out. Um, but you just do that and uh, we stick it in the oven and it's really easy. We're good, now we're on. So, all right. Um, I just wanted to show you my um, preserved lemons. 
There they are. And it's, uh, it's sort of like a pickle, basically. Very salty, but really great for your gut. Just like eating, you know, um, any preserved, preserved or pickled vegetable. And not only do I use it in my fish, I love to use it, of course, in olive chicken, Moroccan olive chicken. Um, I use it in sauces, in salads. I'll make an Israeli salad and I chop up little pieces of lemon and it just gives it that amazing vibrant taste. And right now all the lemons are ripe. And you know, if you have too many lemons, if you're lucky enough to have a lemon tree, this is an excellent way, you know, to use them up. Um, right. So you, you can uh, look up on our website, how to make it. And then you just keep it in your fridge. It, you know, people have them in there for up to a year, basically. And the softer they get, the more amazing they are. Wow. So we're going to make these, um, delicious little almond cookies for you. And um, they are very versatile. You can add any kind of flavoring that you like to them. Um, basically, we recommend cardamom, cinnamon, rose water, orange flower water, almond extract, whatever your kids or vanilla, your whatever you have on yeah. hand that's kosher for Passover. Um, you need to, with the egg whites, you have to be careful not to get the yolks in there. You put them in a clean bowl and then you whisk them really well. So they get a bit fluffy, a little bit fluffier than this. Um, this is a fun project to do with your kids. If you have little kids at home, yeah. they can definitely help you with this. Absolutely. You know, um, Rachel's, um, a major fan of coconut sugar. I am, you know, um, I'm a big baker. My family is, we're Moroccan. We have super sweet tooth, all Moroccans do. <laughs> um, because, you know, we are a big community of bakers. Um, but, you know, a few years back, my parents have diabetes. My niece does, is allergic to sugar. A lot of things came up and then, I kept reading about, you know, all the benefits of honey, uh, uh, not agave so much anymore, but maple syrup and coconut sugar. And this recipe, we thought we would sub the white sugar, processed sugar for coconut sugar, and it gives it just a beautiful color as well. So putting in my coconut sugar and it, coconut sugar has like a little bit of a maple taste. So it's really nice in recipes that you would think, you know, this also gives it a nice color. So I'm um, gonna add a little bit of cinnamon. And we didn't crush our cardamom, but this is what it looks like whole. And then you can crush it. It's, cardamom gives an amazing menthol eucalyptus flavor. My, uh, in Middle Eastern cooking and in Indian cooking, my grandmother used it in her, uh, her Shabbat to be, which was chicken and rice. She used to put it in her tea with mint. It's just excellent for digestion and it's just a very subtle flavor. So here's our almond flour. And actually this is a cookie that I make all year long. It's just, you know, I sometimes add chocolate chips to it. Um, you can add raisins to it. It's not necessarily just for Passover. I mean, we all know now how popular almond flour is. Yeah. Someone is asking and, if you could use Passover cake flour for this, I guess, instead of the almond flour. Well, it's more of a macaroon, but I don't see why not. I just don't know about the measurements, how they would differ. Probably it's very similar because we're putting three cups of almond flour. And you're going to add the so, orange blossom water. Right. So we're, we decided profile we like. <laughs> we made some of these yesterday and we ate a bunch of them. So with cinnamon and orange blossom water. So I'm putting one tablespoon because it's pretty strong stuff. Yeah. So here's a spatula if you want to. Yeah. Maybe. Uh -oh. do, you, do you use black or green cardamom and, and can you explain the difference? I Well inside the pod is black. I didn't know that there is black cardamom. Green cardamom it, it, the the cardamom that I've seen is is always green, um, but there's black pods like the little seeds inside are black. So maybe that's the confusion. Mm. Hope that answers that question. You know, did you say that you have it with tea? It's so delicious. Yes, tea. Yeah. with tea. Um, what else do we put it in? 
Yeah, it's just a really, and in baking, it's delicious. Yeah, Very, now, we've been friends since we were in high school, and I used to go to Sharon's house and have tea, and I just loved it, and I never knew what it was, and they would say, it's hail. <laughs> I say hell. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> and that's what they call it in Arabic. Hell, hell. So, but Rachel also came to my house. Well, my parents' house at the time, and we had an orange tree, and she stood there plucking all the little white blossoms. I'm like, what are you doing? She's like, I'm gonna make tea for my parents. I'm like, oh, I don't know. You put flowers in tea. Yeah. So we. That's what. That's the wonderful thing about our collaboration is we really learn a lot from each other. Um, and, you know. you know, and I think like Sephardic, we, we really use, uh, you know, our backyard, our plants, the mint that's growing all over my backyard. I rarely buy mint. You know, if someone I know has a lemon or orange tree, I'm there she's, picking the blossoms. She's, she's, <laughs> she's also there uh, picking my little kumquats off my tree. I like to make jam with kumquats. <laughs> yeah. So it's fun. Um, you know, we're a uh, Mediterranean diet. is very you know, fruit and veg vegetable intense. So we are using a little ice cream scooper to scoop up our dough, right? And don't worry if they're not perfect. Right. They they come out cute when you make them. Well, maybe that one's, maybe <laughs> I'm digging that a little too far. And then when you put your almond in, so you're gonna flatten it. I got some blanched, I mean, some uh, peeled almonds and you're just gonna like push it down and that's it. You can put anything you want on top. You don't have to put anything on top. But they're cute with the almond, makes yeah, them festive. Good. Yeah, exactly. These are extra protein, guys. Homemade. Someone is asking what you would sub for the cardamom during Passover for us Ashkenazis. Do you use cinnamon? Cinnamon, vanilla, lemon juice would be delicious. Cloves. You use cloves? Whatever, whatever spices you have on hand that are kosher for Passover or no spices, it's fine. I, you know, I buy something called pumpkin spice for Thanksgiving and I always have it for the whole year. But Ashkenazim are, you can't use pumpkin spice? I don't know if they can. They, they want their, it's fine. We, huh? You know, you, you'll manage with lemon, vanilla, uh, cinnamon, it, it'll be delicious. Just whatever. Right. Or they, like these waters, are these kosher for Passover? They're kosher, I just don't know. Oh, well, my colleague said that she Googled it and they suggest lemongrass as a substitute. Yeah, that would be delicious. Yeah. Um, but I think, you know, it's a basic, you can use your basic like uh, nutmeg, uh, cinnamon, clove kind of thing. Yeah, whatever, whatever like sweet spices okay. that you have on hand, you could definitely oh, do. Yeah. So you can coconut, almond extract, is that okay? You can use that. Yeah, the thing that we've learned, I mean, we were cooking, you know, way before we, we ever did uh, Sephardic Spice Girls, but what we've learned is like not to be intimidated by recipes, to be to feel free to adapt a recipe to, like like Rachel said to your palate to your to your taste, but just throw in as many vegetables as many herbs as many spices because it's just health giving and uh, and nutritious right and um, you know recently I was on a pretty severe autoimmune. Uh, diet product protocol because I was trying to figure out what I am allergic to. I have a lot of inflammation in my body. And the first thing the doctor told me is olive oil, avocado oil, no seed oil, no canola oil, no vegetable oils, just because those are the cleanest oils you're going to get. And also, of course, to cut down on sugar. And yesterday was my first bite of a cookie and I just was in heaven. <laughs> this is totally like delicious cookie. Let's so show, show them what the finished product looks like. That's what they look like 10, 10 to 12 minutes. The coconut, I think needed a little bit more baking time. The, the, the coconut sugar. Oh yes, uh -huh. yeah. the coconut sugar will probably need a little longer than if you had white. Than if you so they're kind of like, Crunchy on the outside, crispy on the outside, and chewy on the inside, and so delicious. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, that's us. us. Please ask us some questions. Um, I a question came in about your your uh, which pots and pans you like to use. Um, I love cast iron. Cast iron always gives everything like a nice, you know, wonderful color and flavor. Um, you can get cast iron pans for $20. Lodge um, is my favorite brand. Um, 
And I love, you know, like my Cuisinart pans are beautiful. And so like that fish, I can actually bring it to the table in that pan. And I use like a close and same as Rachel, you know? Yeah. And um, we got a question that came in during registration and people were asking what your favorite low calorie snacks were. <laughs> <laughs> Kind of off topic, but I thought, I thought, well, we have a few minutes. Um, no, uh, low calorie snacks, uh, apples, yes. <laughs> celery, carrots, the same as fennel. Uh, <laughs> I, love fennel. I like, chop up fennel all the time. Keep it in right. my fridge. My right. kids love it. Um, Hikama is amazing. Yummy for the crunch. But, you know, a nice snack that gives you protein and kind of holds you over is um, some nuts, a handful of nuts. Almonds and a date. That's what I, I keep yes. a bag of almonds or, and walnuts and dates in my in my handbag. Whenever I'm hungry, it's why pay for the packaging of a power bar where you could just have that. Yeah. It's like full of iron and full of protein and delicious. And it gives you just that yes. energy boost that you need. And that is my most to go to dessert at night. If I'm feeling like I really need something, I'll have one date and I stuff it with walnuts or, <laughs> or almonds and, yeah. it, and I love it. And dates with peanut butter are delicious too, you know? Um, that's the thing about, I don't I, I find in my family, like the traditional Iraqi desserts are dried fruits, dried apricots, you know, you know, all the dried fruits, all the nuts, pistachios. You know, if you live in Los Angeles, you know how the Persians eat, the Iraqis eat, Similarly, in terms of like the cucumbers as a snack and mm -hmm. the more fresh fruit and vegetables you have, the better, in my opinion. Uh, and we just got another question. What temperature do you suggest cooking the fish if you make it in the oven and for how long? Sure, um, 350, <clears throat> you know, preheat it, put it in at 350. And I would keep an eye on it, but I think depending on how thick your fish is, 15, 20 minutes should be enough. If it's a white fish, if you're doing the salmon, a, a side of salmon, it's different. Um, you know, I would cover it, cook it for a while, maybe like 15 minutes, then uncover it, and then another like 10 minutes to make sure it cooks through. Amazing. Um, well, I'm so impressed we got through all four recipes in like in a very little time. We told you. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. Um, no, well, thank you so much for being here. Um, you know, we, we loved having you and, um, and I hope everybody will check out your social media. I know you had a recipe up, I, was it yesterday? Uh, uh, your Hiroset recipe, which looked amazing also. Um, so, yeah. so. We have a bunch of uh, Pesach things, Passover recipes up right now. Yeah, we just uh, posted uh, stuffed artichokes that are actually made with, um, with uh, you know ground meat, um, it's so funny because somebody else had a had a uh, an evening yesterday, and one of the things they said was, uh, "Don't use any potato starch during Pesach." Oh. And I was looking it up, and in little amounts, potato starch because I put that in our recipe because it makes the meat like you know Sunday. really light and fluffy. And we were trying to make it gluten free as well. Gluten free. So instead yeah. of mass meal in the in the meat in the ground beef, we used. The potato, potato starch. starch and it was so fluffy and delicious, delicious. yeah and it thickened the sauce um and if you don't want red meat of course you can sub turkey or or chicken meat ground chicken ground breast. Breast. yeah and if you really don't want any of that well just make the quinoa, quinoa stuffing <laughs> and, and you know i we have some i don't know if i mentioned like you have this quinoa stuff say you have this stuffing left over just add olive oil and fresh lemon juice you want to put cranberries in there Tomatoes. tomatoes, whatever vegetables you have on hand, chop them in. And this stuffing will make a fa fabulous salad. And, you know, like I said, like keep the uh, quinoa in your fridge, make it with, uh, heat it up, put some baby spinach over it, poach an egg and, and put the egg over the quinoa and the spinach and you've got the most Wait, delicious. And some matupa sauce on top. <laughs> you I don't have to. I love okay. it. You can, you can use all the different recipes in so many different ways. I love how versatile exactly. everything is. Um, well, thank you so much. Uh, thank you know, you. Follow the Sephardic Spice Girls on social media. Check out their website. Uh, we will be sharing all of the information and tips that you learned today in a follow-up email with the recording. 
Uh, special thanks again to Rita for sharing her story with us this morning. Please take a moment to fill out the brief evaluation survey that's linked in the chat. As I mentioned, we are giving away one beautiful Sephardic Spice Girls candle. If you're interested, please fill out the evaluation to enter the giveaway. Evaluations really do inform our future programming. So thank you so much for taking a minute to fill it out. Thanks for joining us. Thank you Bye. for having me. Please never forget that our social workers and genetic counselor are here for you and your loved ones. Sharshara provides emotional support, mental health counseling, and other programs designed to help navigate you through the ca cancer experience. All are free, completely private, one-on-one, -on -one, and our number is 866-474-2774. You can also email us at clinicalstaff at sharsharit.org. Finally, I want to share a couple of the exciting webinars we have planned over the next few weeks. This Friday, April 8th at 9.30 a.m. Pacific, 12.30 Eastern, join us for our third annual Unfader. We'll share deliciously unique matzo recipes you can add to your celebration, traditions you can bring to your Seder table, and discuss how matzo can change its form when it comes together with other ingredients, similar to how we can change our perspective when we have the support we need. And finally, save the date for our next Our Share It in the Kitchen, Cooking with the Cuban Reuben, Jennifer Stemple, who will be sharing some flavorful Cuban made healthy recipes on Wednesday, May 11th at 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. Also the first 100 registrants will be mailed a special gift, so be sure to sign up. Uh, please check out our website regularly to see what topics are coming up. The link is in the chat and you can also access the recordings and transcripts of all of our past webinars on our website. From all of us at Sharsharit, thank you so much for joining us today. We wish you a happy and meaningful Passover.